Hey, here to learn something new? Well, to keep those knowledge gears greased, remember to subscribe and hit the notification button to get notified when a poppin' fresh video is ready for your consumption. All right, tinkerers, most of you probably already know that the Raspberry Pi is a magical Swiss Army knife of tinkerability that you can use to create so many amazing things. But for those of you brand new to the Raspberry Pi concept, before you can get to those amazing cool projects, you first have to know the basics. So this is for you, newbies. Let's say you got a Raspberry Pi as a gift and having never ever seen one before, you wanna know what you can do with it. Well, the first step is to figure out which Raspberry Pi you have. There's three primary models with all different shapes out there. You have the Raspberry Pi Zero, the Raspberry Pi A, and the Raspberry Pi B. The smallest one is the Zero, the square one is the A, and the larger rectangular one is the B. It should also say somewhere on the board what model it is along with what version it is. To get the Pi up and running, here's the basic tools you're gonna need. A keyboard, a mouse, an HDMI monitor, a micro SD card that has at least eight gigabytes of storage, and a micro SD card reader as well as a power adapter. At the time of this video, the newest Raspberry Pi 4 requires a USB-C power adapter and a micro HDMI adapter, but all the other Pis, again at the time of this video, use a micro USB adapter. Now the Pi Zero, because of its size, will also require a USB and HDMI adapter so you can fit regular components into its tiny ports. And all newer versions of the Raspberry Pi from 2016 onward have built-in wireless and Bluetooth. One final caveat is that the Raspberry Pi A and Zero models only have one USB port. So to use both a mouse and keyboard on those, you could either use a keyboard mouse combo device like I have here, or a USB hub. So with all those components ready for your Pi, you can plug everything in except for the power. Before we can power it up, we first need to install an operating system. So let's do that right now. On a separate computer, open up a web browser and go to raspberrypi.org slash downloads. There's a lot of different operating systems to choose from, Ubuntu Linux, Windows 10, Internet of Things, which is not the real version of Windows 10, a couple of different media center OSs, and some other various operating systems. And I'll go over some of those other operating systems in future videos, but for right now, the most common operating system and the one that we're gonna use is called Raspbian, which is a Raspberry Pi version of Debian Linux. If you want the full Raspberry Pi experience, download the version of Raspbian with recommended software. And while you wait on that, the next step is to install Raspbian on your micro SD card. So grab your micro SD card, put it in the USB adapter, and plug it into your computer. Next, we're going to need another piece of software called Balina Etcher, and you can download it for Windows, Mac, or Linux from their website. And once it's installed, you can use it to select the Raspbian image file that we downloaded, and then select your micro SD card drive, and then flash the image to the micro SD card. This may take several minutes, but when it's done, you can remove the micro SD card and insert it into your Pi. Now you can power it up. Upon first boot, you'll be presented with a setup wizard that will guide you through selecting your location, time zone, keyboard layout, setting a password, and connecting to Wi-Fi and installing updates. The wizard will ask you to reboot the Pi and then whenever it comes back up, you're in. So now what can you do? Well, you can use it like a normal computer. You have a web browser, you have your video and audio player, office suite software, you even have a Pi version of Minecraft. But what the Pi is really known for is a programming platform. So under the programming menu, you'll find editors for most of the popular programming languages like Python, Java, Scratch, and Node-RED. And if you can't find something that you're looking for, you can always go to preferences and recommended software to find more. 
Okay, so it's a great programming platform, but what can you program? Well, one of the primary features of the Pi are these input-output pins that you can use to control other electronic devices. And you can use the built-in programming languages to control the pins. So let's start by connecting an LED to the pins. So using a breadboard, a resistor, and some spare wire, you can connect the ground leg of the LED to a ground pin on the Pi, and the positive leg to the the resistor and then on to pin 17 on the Pi. Now we can open up one of the Python editors on Raspbian such as Mu to write the code that controls the LED. Start by importing the LED class from the GPIO0 library and then import sleep class from the time library. We need to tell Python which GPIO pin the LED is attached to and then we can create a loop that turns the LED on, waits a second, and then turns the LED off continuously. Turning on an LED is a simple exercise that uses the pins for output, but we can also use the pins to gather input. To do this, let's add a button to our breadboard and connect one side to ground and the other side to pin two on the Pi. Then in our code, we can import the button class, tell Python which pin it's attached to, and then replace our loop with a command that waits for the button to be pressed, and then when it is, lights up the LED. If you've never touched a Raspberry Pi before, hopefully now you have it up and running and have coded your first program. That's it for this chapter of the field guide. That's one more tinkering tool to add to your toolbox. Want to suggest a guide? Head on over to tinkernut.com slash ideas to submit your idea. If you want more tinkering videos, you can click here. Or please be kind enough to like, subscribe, or comment.